Wuhan city is the capital of Hubei province and I think is one of the most popular cities in the world, starting from December 2019. The reason for such popularity is certainly not good and I think that still for the most people Wuhan will remain virus certain point. However, in this video I'll try not to mention any of those topics. Instead of that, I will tell you about the city itself, just the same as I did with Chongqing. By the way, you can click that pop-up link to see the full video about Chongqing. And also, if you still didn't subscribe to my channel, now is the time. Okay, so this is the short description from the official website of Wuhan. Wuhan city is famous national historic and cultural city, a central city and the only sub-provincial city in central China as well as an important industrial base, a science and education base, and the integrated transportation hub in China. It is occupying an area of more than 8,000 square kilometers. Also, Wuhan is the place where many countries have set up their consulates, like France, the United States, the UK, and South Korea. If you look at the map of Wuhan, the first thing that catches your eye is huge number of river lakes and parks in the city. The place is literally cut by various rivers along with huge green beautiful parks. Especially it looks beautiful from my drone. I would say that Wuhan has its own copy of New York Park, but it's a bit smaller than the original one. Also in those parks you can find quite interesting places. If you come here in the middle of fall, the whole place turns into yellow and orange colors, especially in those parks that I mentioned before. By the way, it is great pleasure to walk in those parks. It's quiet and calm and you can enjoy beautiful nature around you. Like I said before, Wuhan is a huge green city with fascinating mountains and rivers landscapes. One of the biggest rivers in the world, Yanzi, runs through the whole city. The water space occupies around 25% of the city area, which makes Wuhan quite a unique Chinese city with such indicator. 165 large and small rivers and 166 lakes in the city. Due to the huge number of rivers, Wuhan also has a lot of different bridges connecting one part of the city with another. Wuhan has dozens of those bridges and they differ in size and length, but all of them are attractive in their own way. And even despite the fact that we had only two days to stay in Wuhan, we still decided to go and see one of them. I would say probably one of the biggest bridges in the city. The English name of this bridge is Inwuzhou Yanzi River Bridge. Chinese began its construction in 2010 and finished it in 2013. However, the traffic was opened only in 2014. Its length is around 3.5 kilometers, and its construction costs were around 5 billion yuan or 750 million dollars. Also, China placed the picture of this bridge on its postage stamp. That was the way China demonstrated its architectural and constructional achievements. Wuhan is a huge city with massive buildings and extensive underground train system. This is what it looks like. By the time we were there, it had 199 stations. The subway itself is not that interesting as Chongqing Underground. By the way, you can check my video about Chongqing by clicking that link. So as I said, it's not that interesting, but still has its own peculiarities. For example, on the station you can find drinking fountains. And another interesting fact about Wuhan's subway is that workers of that subway are wearing pink uniform. So as for now, I told you about different parks and bridges in Wuhan, but there are also other places to see in there. For example, Guangku Walking Street. This street combined different architecture styles of four European countries. Italy, France, Germany, and Spain. This place is one of the main tourist attraction, and each year has more than 115 million visitors from different parts of China. Also, this place shows that China is not only able to build its own Eiffel Tower, but also is able to create entire European streets. At the same time, it encourages people not to leave country if they want to travel somewhere. For example, if you want to see those European-style architecture and make cool pictures like that, you can do it inside China. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that method. So, the first part of this zone was built in 2008 and since then it has been growing. You can not only find different churches and cathedrals there, but also different shops and restaurants. For example, one of the restaurants is located just inside this old Boeing 737. Yeah, just future plane is standing in the middle of the walking street. How cool is that? 
So as you can see, there is a mix of different architecture represented here in Wuhan. But there are not only new buildings, there are also some old places and monuments that you can observe here. For example, this church of Alexander Nevsky, which is an old Orthodox cathedral, which was built in 1893. The church itself is located in the Hanko, and today it's under government protection as an architectural heritage. The Alexander Nevsky Church is truly an expected place to see in this part of China. But for me, there is another place which is more attractive and more interesting to visit. It's called Kudasi Gothic Temple. This is kind of a secret place and not all locals know about it. Also, it doesn't appear in popular touristic routes and catalogs. In addition, it was very difficult to find any information in English about this place. And I think there is a reason for that. How many Gothic-style Buddhist temples have you seen before? In Asia, there is only one place similar to this one. Another Buddhist temple, Ananda, which was built in Myanmar. So, official Chinese version says that monks built this temple in 1977. The territory of the complex is around 2000 square meters. After I come back from this trip, I found interesting fact that monks in this temple were rescuing wounded soldiers of the Wuhan uprising. After that, more than 3,000 martyrs were buried on the site of the temple. In 1912, one of the Chinese leaders at the time, Sun Yat-sen, made a special trip to Gudisi Temple to pay respect to the soldiers. In the same year, the Hubei military government repaired their graves on the site of the temple. In 1974, the land of the Gudisi Temple was used by the Wuhan Camera Factory. In 1996, Gudisi Temple was opened again, however, many buildings were already destroyed. And nowadays, this temple is considered to be one of the national cultural relics. So coming back to Wuhan, I would like to briefly mention a um, situation that happened here two years ago and changed the whole world after that. I'm not going to retell different versions of how and where it all happened, I guess you've heard it a million times already. So before coming to Wuhan, I was thinking and hesitating, should we go to that famous market or not? And in the end, I decided not to go there. Considering what happened with us, I think that that was the right decision to stay away from that place. I think that local government and people a little bit afraid of spies or something and maybe they think that foreigners are coming there to find some secret information or stuff like that. That's why we got so many questions from the hotel reception, like who we are, what we're doing in China, why did we come here. Again, we didn't do anything illegal there, but still some locals can think that you are spying and can call police. So mind that if you're planning your trip to Wuhan. I would say that Wuhan is a very big green city, with beautiful parks and modern buildings around. This place has very mystical historical background, hiding old churches and cathedrals inside. If you want to explore the city, I recommend you to spend around 3 to 5 days. Two days definitely not enough to see all the places that I mentioned in the video. So that's it in this video, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet, smash your thumbs up. And don't forget to leave your comments below. Have a good day and see you in the next videos.